everybody. Last time I did a thing about balloon swords. This time I'm going to take out the balloon part and I'm going to be talking about just swords. It's something I've been doing for quite a while, so I have a bit to talk about. Hello, everybody. This, to be official, is not an official video of the Society for Creative Anachronisms, the East Kingdom, Kingdom of Ethelmark, or any other official anything. This is just my observations of 30 some odd years of doing this sort of thing, so I hope it's helpful for you. Take it for what it's worth. The first thing I'd like to talk to you about is modern fencing, because SDA fencing does come from modern fencing. And modern fencing has changed since the SCA has started. There was fencing at the first event, but if you even looked at modern fencing then and modern fencing now, that was 50 whatever years ago, 60 years ago, a lot has changed. So modern fencing weapons, there are three styles of modern fencing weapons. There are foils, which is a thrust only weapon where the target is just your body, if you basically take my doublet and go, only the doublet. Basically, that's foil. There's epe, which is the entire body is a target, but it's still only a thrust-only weapon. And saber, which is a primarily a cut-based weapon, and the target is from the belt line up. That's still the same, but the weapons themselves have changed and the SCA eventually evolved out of modern fencing weapons, but our roots are based there and there's still reasons for knowing these things. This is a foil. This is a foil from back in the day. This very well could be older than me. This could be something that might have been seen at the first event. I'm not sure, but this is ancient. The, uh, this is a modern foil, modern-ish. Uh, it's been a long time since I fenced in modern competition, so... Uh, modern fencing weapons are handed. This is a right-handed weapon. This fits into the right hand like this. By the curve going down this way and up this way into the hand. This is the electrical socket the body cord plugs into to make you electric. And then down at this end there's a little button. And that button would hit a metallic vest and trigger the thing. Foils have a square cross-section blade. Again, it is a rectangular, and that's where the wire is, by the way, that groove. Foils have a rectangular cross-section. Epes have a triangular cross-section. And sabers, I have a saber blade here. It's pretty grody. It's fairly rusted. From all the tears of epee fencers who are scared of saber fencers. And it is pretty much, most of them are a rectangular type. You can see there's sort of a blade, but not really. But the tip is a little different. It does get really thin at the end, which is one of the reasons they kind of didn't want to use these for SEA purposes, because even though it's nice and flexy, uh, it doesn't, they don't last that long if all you do is thrust. And it has a curled tip here, which is pretty good. Uh, my coach used to make mention of the fact that she could tell if you were hitting correctly, because that sounds different than that. And though most directors don't care, she cared. So hit correctly, don't hit flat. Okay, so 
we were playing with foils and epes. They would look similar to this, except eventually we started modifying them to make them more towards the Three Musketeers, Robin Hood kind of things we wanted. We started adding like keons to them. This is, you know, off a wall hanger, old stage combat stuff, whatever we could find, you know, theatrical weapons and stuff. We would butcher them, use them for our own purposes. Eventually, we got to the point where we were creating our own weapons for the game that we play. Um, this is a Pop and Jay weapon. It is... What it's like to fight with this is rather like fighting with a laser pointer. I can pick out a target with this so ridiculously fast. Unfortunately, we don't play with these that much anymore. Depending on your kingdom, you might not play with them at all. That's your loss, as far as I'm concerned. But I'm going to use this to show you the parts of the sword. Starting at the back, this is a pommel. In modern weapons, this still counts as a modern weapon, this is how the weapon is held together. It's usually on a thread, threaded tang. Back in the day, these didn't thread off. That's not how historic weapons were put together. But modern weapons... That holds the weapon together. This is also the counterbalance for your weapon altogether. This plus the white blade is how you balance your weapon. Then you have your handle. You have your knuckle bow. You have your keons. Yes, I know it's spelled funny. You have your rakasa, which is this piece here ahead of the handle but behind the guard, you have the guard, you have your blade, you have, and the blade is broken into three pieces, three sections also, you have your forte, your mid, and your foible, the foible is the flexi part. In some weapons, in some weapons, the blade will go through the guard and meet up at the keons. This is still the rakasa. The blade is still measured from the guard out. But fair warning, when you go to buy a weapon, and this weapon is a problem with problem child with that, the manufacturer of the blade will measure from the hip of the blade because they may not know how long your rakasa is supposed to be. So, if you're buying blades separate, keep track of that. Oops. Stab the ceiling. Okay, now you have an idea about the modern fencing weapons. They did exist in the SCA. They are still legal in some kingdoms, though very downplayed. Some kingdoms don't let you use them at all. Again, I think that's a shame, but because we're grown-ups. Let us play with toys. Because they're all toys. But from there, you may hear the term Schlager thrown around a lot. Schlagers are a German saber. The uh, dueling scar, that's from Schlager. You would stand there and you'd whack at each other until someone got cut on the face. Hey, they're German. Uh... I have here, where'd it go? Nope, where'd it go? More internet gold, I'm sure. There it is. This is one of the original oval bladed schlagers. It's literally just an oval. Tapers down. These caused quite a stir in the SEA when they started using them. Because we're fighting with steel weapons. Ooh. Um, it's really... This one's not really much stiffer than a stiff foil or epe. Um, I have had double-wide epes that were way stiffer than this. But, you know, we moved on. This is, you know, from that era. From there... We went to 
this is actually a diamond bladed Schlager. The difference being is that you can see there is sort of a edge look to it. So, and if this actually came through to form the Rikasa, here's my Rikasa. You know, the blade starts sort of there. The difference between this and, say, a rapier blade for SEA purposes is nothing. For the reality of it, if you're ordering something, this blade's made by the same company. This would be their diamond bladed rapier blade. It actually tapers, whereas the Schlager blade is just straight. That's the big difference. Whoopee. Um, realistically, having it taper to the point does have an advantage to it that it takes less weight at the end of that lever. So balancing your weapon is a little bit easier. Okay, so if you're looking at a new weapon, something you don't know, and you're new to this, something that's interesting, your balance point on your weapon is probably more important than the weight of the weapon. A lot of people go, I want a light weapon because I want to go fast. And that doesn't always translate. What you're really looking for, and this is something to play with, is the balance point of the weapon. Most weapons will balance about two inches from the guard. This is a 35 inch diamond Schlager with Frankenstein parts on the back. This is all old stage combat stuff that's been cobbled together. It's a wall hanger display piece for bell guard. You know, this is a little bit further in is about an inch and a half from the bell guard. This is a 37 inch blade. And somebody's garage project welded together guard. Modern fencing foil. Uh, two inches from the guard. Long sword. This one will be a little more. Okay, that's about five inches from the guard. But look where you got to go before it starts moving down that way. The balance point of your weapon will determine how the weapon handles. If the balance point is closer to your hand, the blade will move faster or will feel faster. If the balance point is further down the blade, the blade will feel more steady and will want to cut more. If the balance point is too far back, the point will feel whippy and uncontrollable. And if the balance point is too far down the blade, it will feel sluggish and heavy, regardless of the weight of the weapon. Some weapons this makes sense for. This next weapon is nowhere near SEA legal, either time period wise or any other use. You know, you know this is a single handed weapon. And the balance point is twice what the longsword was, which is a two-handed weapon. But this is a very singular purpose weapon from horseback, basically for just hacking people down, not really for fencing. So you're looking at a balance point two inches ahead of the guard, 
give or take. Personal preference on some of that. So that's an introduction to the basics of SCA fencing weapons. There are other weapons out there. There are katanas, there are curved blades, there are serrated or crisp looking weapons where the blade waves and stuff like that. If you're looking for your first weapon, don't get your hopes up on those. They all have their own unique characteristics and personalities to them that when you know what you're doing with them can be fun but without a base knowledge of the game, you are looking for bad habits that are just going to be hard to break. If you're really dead set on that, use that determination with a regular straight bladed weapon to push you forward to get those skills quickly to get better to get that weapon. Also, if you're looking to buy your first weapon, don't spend a lot of money don't. Right now we have health issues, nobody's getting out to do anything, so there's no rush to having a weapon. I know it's the fun part of the game is owning weapons. Unless you're independently wealthy, in which case buy all the weapons you want. Just buy them all and then play with them against your wall or something. But I'm not that... <laughs> I can't do that. And I've been at this a while. So... Do your best to borrow weapons when practices start up again. I don't know a single person who will not have a weapon to lend you. Saying, here, try this. They're out there. Now, somebody may say, like my longsword, I don't lend those to new people. I don't lend that longsword. This longsword, I do not lend to new fencers because... It is only barely legal as far as the bend is concerned. So if you're not careful, this one's going to hit you. Go. That's going to thud you. My old long sword, or, yeah, here, take it. And just about everything else in this pile, I'd be like, yeah, go ahead, try. And I don't know anybody who, unless there's something strange about the weapon, won't let you borrow it. At least to feel it, to try it out. Whatever weapon you buy for your first weapon is going to be wrong. I promise you that. It's a guarantee. It's a written guarantee. Completely. Sign the check. Completely wrong. Sooner or later, you're going to buy another sword. I have more swords than I have hands. And I'm a starving artist. It's going to happen. Until you know what you want, you don't know what you want. So making that decision is difficult. Most weapons nowadays, as of today-ish, you're looking at, for a beginner weapon, 150 to $200. Unfortunately, we don't play with foils and epes anymore. You could have gotten a little cheaper with that. But... If you do get a chance to play foil and epee with somebody, foil or epee, eh, do so. It's fun. But as far as SCA fencing is concerned, it's also kind of throwback antique. It's like listening to your vinyl records. History within a history group. Imagine. So don't spend a lot of money on your first weapon. Borrow a bunch of weapons before you invest in something and have fun. Don't take this too seriously. We're having a game here. These are toys. Some of them are very expensive toys, but they're toys. Hope you're safe. Hope you're well. Have a wonderful day. If you have any questions at all, Feel free to leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. If you are already fencing, tell me what weapon you're playing with and what's your new favorite toy. It may help somebody else out who says, hey, he didn't mention this. Mention it. Let me know. And if you like and subscribe to this video, that would be awesome because realistically these videos are trying to keep me sane. Ish. Yeah, I play with swords.
so much for saying. Either which way, thank you very much. Have a good day.